Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today's video is a bit of a request from one of the viewers who is kind of saying, we've seen a lot of the plants that you've got on your conservatory, most of us don't have a conservatory, fair point well made. Um, what about the plants that are in the rest of your house? Because I keep mentioning about the plants that are in the rest of my house and kind of regular household humidity above radiators, right in the windows, all of these things. And I thought, you know what, I've never actually showed the rest of the collection that is not in here, which tends to be slightly more common house plants essentially, or <laughs> a whole bunch of propagates. So what I will do for this video this is probably one of the few times you're going to see me in this video because I can't think of another way to film this, but I will do a, a kind of point of view of all the different plants that I have got in my house. And I think I'm going to do pretty much all of them. So we're going to be going into kitchens, bedrooms, bathrooms, all of these. <laughs> so you can see all of the different plants. I'll tell you where each one of these things are. If I remember, I will tell you what aspect that window is as well. And obviously you can see how close they are to the windows. If I can remember, I will also show you how close it might be to a radiator. So that can kind of give you a bit of an indication of kind of the humidity levels that location gets. I might see and I might add different kind of informational bits throughout the video of kind of like, what aspect this window is, if I've forgotten to say, or maybe what the humidity is roughly going to be around that area and kind of what the temperatures have been. Because at different stages of growing these plants in this space, I have had the thermometer and the hydrometer in all of these different locations. So yes, the other thing I will say, <laughs> and for the people that have been here, I hate doing these types of videos because I am a messy person by nature. And I'm not going to lie, I am not going to sit there and tidy just so I can film this. So you are seeing warts and all. You're going to see crispy leaves, you're going to see mess, you're going to see dust, you're going to see windows that probably should have been cleaned two months ago but still haven't happened. But <laughs> time and life. So they will, these things will all happen in their own time. Probably won't be today. But yeah, I thought instead of me kind of avoiding doing these types of videos because everything needs to be immaculate, I am a huge proponent, at least on my channel, of kind of warts and all. Most people's houses are not immaculate all the time. Most people's collections are not immaculate at all times. I want to be one of the people trying to stop perpetuating that notion that everything needs to be spectacular, and it usually only ever does when we're filming or when we're taking photos. So this is the realities of owning a big collection and the mess that it could cause around the house. The other thing I will say, I know this is probably a bit of a long intro, the other thing I will say is there was a few break-ins around this area, I think the year where I moved in and people were really worried and people were breaking in through windows and I'm just like, good luck to them. I have got basically like a whole bunch of pots with pond, which essentially is just heavy gravel or terracotta pots on pretty much every window in here. Good luck of them trying to get in without making a whole bunch of noise. I know they probably can, but it's the way that I rationalize it to kind of go, you know what, the plants are also serving purposes because they are probably deterring to a certain point or they're acting as burglar or not. <laughs> I know there's a whole bunch of people that are going to tell me that they don't do that, but in my head, that makes sense. <laughs> so without further ado, I've prattled on for too long. Let's have a look at these plants. Coming into the front window of the household, and again, apologies for the Christmas decorations, they are coming out soon. And also you might hear the dog whimper in just a tiny bit because he's just directly underneath me, but hopefully he will settle. So on the corner here, you can see my Hoya Australis Lisa. At the back, you can see a rickrack cactus. And then we have a neon Philodendron, so Hedebaceum philodendron. Right down here below, you can see kind of growing in there is my Cerecestis mirabilis, I think that's what it is. I might be wrong with that one, I'll put a name up there. I think, oh no, this is a Philanthus mirabilis, I think that's the one. Some cuttings 
from um, a cactus, which I'm not remembering right now. All right, at the back there, you can see that is the Hoya macrophylla, if I'm not mistaken. You've got some of the Euphoria obesa that's there. I can never remember what that thing is in the very front. I used to have that in the terrarium, so I will find out and put the name up the top there. You've also got an orchid here, so it's a Susan Fuchs, but again, I'm not remembering the name. I will put it up at the top there. You've got a white variegated Dracaena. And if I just bring you up to the side here, you should be able to see right there in a lot of sun is a cutting that I am propagating of a Melanochrysum. You've got a Paphia petalum with a checkerboard and it's in bloom currently. You've got cuttings here that I did of my Philodendron pedatum. There's another orchid, Paphia petalum, that's about to bloom. There's two blooms, one there and one here. And there is a Hoya crimson princess, I think, somewhere here. And I cannot remember what the other Hoya is, but again, I'll check and let you know. There is a Philodendron gigas. There is a propagation there. Again, that is in pawn. The Hoyas are in pawn. The propagation of the philodendron is in pawn. And then we've got the crown of thorns that you can see there, which is loving life because obviously it's getting quite a bit of light. You can see this is kind of a south facing window. This is kind of the front part of the house. One of the oldest snake plants that I have, I think this plant is probably about five or six years old now. It's grown a bit and I'm not expecting it to grow a huge amount, but it is doing quite well in its location. And it's probably about couple of meters away from a south facing window, so it's doing really, really well. Some of my errant little snake plants, so that is a samurai and that is a starfish, and both of these are actually potted up in pond. Please ignore kind of Christmas decorations because today is the day that I take down most of the Christmas decorations. So this is one of the big plants that I have within my space and this is a relatively large Strelitzia nicolai, so a white bird of paradise. You can see <laughs> there's no janky support sticks but there is a trellis, there is a new leaf that's coming in there and considering that this plant was on the brink of death for most of last year because of the, wa the water not being able to evaporate too quickly within its pot. I did what a lot of people do actually and just took it outside. For most of the summer it bounced back spectacularly. I think when I bought it back in it only had a couple of leaves and it's doing quite well. Probably what will happen again, you can see some of the leaf damage at the very bottom there where you might be able to see, if I bring it there, there you go, you can see that section there was because it was windy, it was sunny, all of these things. So yeah, we'll definitely be trying that again next year and this is bouncing back quite nicely. All right, coming into what probably is the messiest room in the whole house. This is the old kitchen that will be gutted and fixed up very soon when the funds come in, but for now it's looking a bit janky, but it has got a good window. There is a propagate there of the Raphidophora tetrasperma. Right at the top here, I've got a Tradescantia nanook, which was a propagate because everything died from the mother plant and it was just one stem and it's doing quite well. That's been there for a couple of years now. This is a Cebu Blue cutting that is doing well. Right at the back there, you might be able to see the variegated Epipremnum pinnatum. This is ooh, a Hoya that again, I cannot remember, I think it's Multiflora, but I will put it up the top there. That was a tiny cutting that I got from Jane Perone and on the Ledge podcast. And I will again put the names at the top because I cannot remember what that one is called, but it's the one that looks a bit like a succulent version of an ivy, which is kind of cool. It's done really well. 
And the reality is here, I was trying to propagate a Stephanotis. That did not work well. That is the last chunk of a Philodendron varicosum that I have got. And right in the back, I bought that as just a ficus in a terrarium type of mason jar, so a clip top mason jar. That's probably about six years old now, and it's probably never been watered in the last four years. There is a Samurai Sansevieria canary, even though it's lost most of its yellow, you can see some lightness in there. That is what remains of the varicosum. There was a bit of a false start at the very top there. Apologies about all the focusing. Here is... Schifflera, I think that is a form of Schifflera that is variegated, doesn't get particularly large. Got that originally for the terrarium, Just did alright, so I kind of cut it there. I've got some cuttings propagating of the Hoya Keria, again in pond, you can see all the pond here and there. Apologies about how dirty and filthy this window ledge is, and you can see the previous owners. It was a horrendous yellow, orange, and green tile situation, so they decided, what? way to make it even worse. Let's paint everything a really ruddy grey. Um, and here you've got Donkey Tail, I think, sedum. Not entirely sure about that one, but that one was one little leaf that I found in a plant that I bought years ago, now probably five or six years, and I potted it in, and it's grown into its own little plant. Um, here is the first cutting I've ever taken of my Philodendron Esmeraldense, and it is propagating in pond. This has taken a very, very long time. I'm now trying something different with the top cutting of my Esmeraldense, which is air layering it, and it seems to be doing quite well. That was my Alocasia Black Velvet, which I thought was dead, but I found a corm, stuck it into some Leco, which is something I've been trying. Again, apologies for how filthy it is. Um, and it's doing quite well. This is Epipremnum amplicium in Pon that is doing really, really well. Right there at the back, there is, uh, I think that is a Hoya australis, just the regular green version. And this in front, which kind of comes all the way down to there, is a Philodendron Dark Lord, which is just propagate, it's taking its time, but it's doing okay. I know technically this is not outside in regular household humidity, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on my BioOrb Air, and it's doing quite well. It's a scraggly mess, but I'm liking the jungle feels for sure. And apologies again for this section here, because it's right next to the washing machine and the washing machine is going. But here there is a propagate of uh, white variegated Syngonium, so Syngonium put a film albo. There is a propagate of Hoya, not Hoya, Monstera Oblica Columbia. That is some of my seedlings, which are not doing so great from the anthurium mixes that I did. This is a Ficus Audrey. Uh, I think it's Benengalesis, I think, which I got from a lovely, lovely individual from a uh, plant swap in London. And we had a nice little chat and we were saying, I had one, it didn't do very much other than have the same leaves that it did and grow loads of roots. Currently, it is doing exactly the same thing. So I'm hoping maybe when the summer comes in, I might get a leaf. Right at the back there, you can see a propagate of a leaf of uh, Begonia seismorii. Right in the back was the last remaining sections of my Monstera adansonii. There is a propagate of the Piper sylvaticum there. There is a propagate of the Hoya Wyettii variegata. And right here in front, you might be able to see this is a cutting that I've been propagating of the Philodendron Splendid. It's looking a bit janky, but it's doing okay for now. Okay, we're in the front window of the kitchen at the moment. Ignore the cars passing by. Um, but here at the very side, we have got, and I'll try to move the net curtain out the way so you can actually see it clearly. That is a five or six year old plant of the Hoya pubicalix. And I was gonna get rid of it this year and 
it because it never bloomed, and I had it for nearly five or six years, and it bloomed this year, so it gets to stay another year. Under life for this section, there's a whole bunch of Hoyas, and I might not remember all of their names just off the top of my head. And you can see there was a bit of an ant issue at some point, so that was dealt with. This is what I thought was um, a Christmas cactus, but I was looking at Sarah and the plant rescuer, and she was kind of describing the difference between a Christmas cactus and a Thanksgiving cactus. So this apparently is a Thanksgiving cactus. And this was a couple of leaves when I first bought it four years ago and it's doing really, really well. Right next to it, and it's still kind of blushing, is my Hoya Sunrise. This one did great in terms of blooms last year for me. That is a Hoya, which I cannot remember the name. Maybe it's Callistophila, which I wanted for a long time. I got this from the previous, so a couple of plant swaps ago. It literally bought out one new leaf and it's tiny as that. And that's all it's done in the last year and a half. But I've got hopes. This one, I cannot remember, but this one kind of bought back from the brink of death. And you might be able to see some of the blushing leaves at the very top again there. That is, I think, one of the parent plants potentially for what was the cross that created the sunrise. I'm not entirely sure, but this one definitely doesn't need an awful lot of light for it to blush. Then... We've got a massive, massive Hoya numeraliades. Oh, wow, words. I cannot ever pronounce that name, but I will put it at the top there. Numeraliades. Oh, I'm butchering that name entirely. Uh, we've got a variegated Hoya carii there. Please ignore my car in the window there. And that one's doing okay. This, this one might be the numeraliades, but I cannot remember... I will put the name of this in the corner. Then we've got the rotunda folia, which is the square or rectangular leaved kind of hoya, which is really cool. This one I can never remember the name of, but I will add the name at the very top. It is a very, very cool hoya, but it's doing okay. This was the original variegated Yeti. That is pretty much at this point a rotted croniana the silver one, and that's probably just going to get dumped in the bin soon. This is my Crinkle 8, which is quite tall at the moment, but that one looks a bit bleached out and it's fine. It gets loads of sun. It got treated for mealybugs because these, <laughs> if you've got this many Hoyas together, if you get mealybugs, they all get mealybugs. But this one does really well in the summer in terms of it being heavily in bloom the whole summer long. And you can see quite how much light is beating down on these plants. And yeah, this one does really, really well for me. We're back into areas that don't get an awful lot of light, but here, that is in water. Those are cuttings of Philodendron heteraceum that have been in water for the last four years. They're doing okay. This is a cutting from the micans that I had. That is a Monstera adansonia that's growing up against this slight fitting there. And you can see the leaves at the very top. This is my very, very large at this point hibiscus. So that one is doing exceptionally well. It's a shame that it doesn't have a single bloom at the moment. Usually in the winter I'll get a bloom every week or two basically, but in the summer this is heavily laden. And you can see there is glass on the door, so these do get a decent amount of light, and that is south facing. And you can see the distance is quite far back basically. So coming into the bathroom situation, so that is a reverted Syngonium albo podophyllum. Then I've got my ponytail palm that's sitting on there. Apologies, there's a bit of an echo. Obviously, this is a bathroom. And let me swing you around, and then you can see what's on the other side. It is a very, very large golden boss that pretty much goes all the way up to the ceiling. And yes, for those, before you ask, there was horrendous Artex ceilings in most of the house. We kind of removed most of them. This was the only one that kind of got left and I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna embrace it. So we got really cheap gold leaf, which I'm assuming isn't real gold, but we gold leafed the Artex and I'm here for it. But yeah, sorry, random. And my bit of art, my plant art, that I did a video unboxing this 
couple of years back, I think. But yeah, let's move on. Okay, and now in the office, and there is... Um, that is an orchid, which I cannot remember what it is called. Next to it is the Syngonium Lanocarti Road, I think is what it's called. It's, it's the Erythrophyllum, I think it's the one that goes red in the back of the leaves, which is really, really cool. There is, I can't remember what that one is. I think that is, mm, that's just a, a random mix of cuttings from a ZZ plant, probably one of the first ones that's kind of surviving. And this is more or less most of the collections of the orchids that I got, most of them are coming into bloom and the majority of these are Phalaenopsis orchids in different colours. Right at the back is different propagates you can see right there of the coconut orchid. This is the small tiny orchid that has not stopped blooming since I bought it seven years ago. And right at the back there you can see a vanilla orchid which at some point does need to move into the conservatory. And then just off the side there, and you can see behind there is a very messy terrarium, terrarium, kind of an enclosure that I have for my bearded dragon. And this is where I have the neon pothos and one of my marble queen pothos. And coming into the unit that exists in this room, right at the back there is, why am I blocking on this one? That's an aspidistra. There is a big golden pothos that is going around all of this. Apologies for all the decorations. Again, one of the few other ZZs that I've managed to keep alive, and that is the Raven ZZ. There is a Monstera Spa Peru. There is a Dracaena there. I think that's everything in this section. And in the spare bathroom that is pretty much the laundry drying room, there is a propagate that I had there. I think I had this on the video. That is the propagate. That is a south facing window there. That is a propagate of the pink princess there that is obviously forever getting stuck. And that is a Petura aquatica that I've kind of forgotten in here. It gets watered, feral plant, does all right. Covers up, I don't need a curtain in here because that covers up most of it. Okay, and now into the room that I kind of use as a bit of a gym. This is literally a bucket of philodendron, burly marks, variegata cuttings. Granted, some of them are reverted, but it's fine because I do like the green form as well, but it is literally a bucket of cuttings. Then we've got some cuttings in a vase of the Malay gold or the golden, hmm, golden goddess philodendron, I think that is. Ignored leaves, they need to be dealt with more propagations of the philodendron pedatum in soil ninjas coarse aroid uh, aroid coarse semi-hydro mix we have got some propagates of my less variegated white with the album and stero there and you can see just some splashes you can see horrendously how bad the situation is with the conservatory and why it is getting replaced it is kind of rotting away which is a shame random cuttings of golden pothos and this is again some propagates of a philodendron eximium which have been doing really really well these are also directly above a radiator and right next to a window this is in a south facing window that's the horrendous state of my garden at the moment, but and you can see my little green wall in the background there. Coming into the other bathroom, again, one of the last remaining ficuses that exists in the house. I cannot remember which ficus that is. I will add it at the top. For some people that were curious about the Stromanthi Magic Star. It's not looking its best at the moment because I've realized now that it really doesn't like the winter months and you can see I've cut some of it, but that is the Magic Star looking a lot more plush. And considering that this was on two leaves when it moved in here and I was trying to get rid of it, it's done all right. Next to it, and again, trials and tribulations, this was a propagate of the Philodendron Burley Marks that was doing really well. I decided I had a few of them. I decided to put them up in the same pot, same substrate. 
uh, threw a hissy fit, lost most of its leaves, and I'm hoping it's going to come back. But that plant for me grows like a weed. It just takes a beat to get going. This is uh, three cuttings of Monstera albos at different times. Again, was doing really well when I had it, and then I decided to pop them all up in the same pot. Lost half of the roots in about three weeks because they started rotting out. Let them air let them dry, cut off all the rot, and they are perking up quite nicely. This has only just been watered a few minutes ago, so it's doing all right. Yes, you will get some brown crispy bits, and this is in a bathroom as well, so this does get quite a lot of humidity, so that tells you something. And then if we swing all the way around, that is something that I created, which is a mix of the Panatum and the Amplicium, and you can see my answer to create planks. All right, and this is the dressing room. Uh, <laughs> can you tell that I need to clean my windows from the inside? Uh, the windows from the outside have been cleaned this week, but yes, there is. <laughs> The joys of things growing on windows when it's this cold in the UK. But we have got a plant, that's a Euphorbia trigona, I think, that I took a cutting from from the top. You can see there that is a bulbous form of an orchid, but again, I'll put the name at the top. There is a Hawarthia at the back that somebody gave to me as a little baby cutting, probably about the size of that, and it's now a bigger plant with loads of its own little baby puppies. Then we've got one of the last remaining Peperomia in my house, which I can never remember. This is the one that's called a mini rubber plant, even though it's not technically a rubber plant. Then we've got an Echeveria there that I cut in a really bad way, but it created two large rosettes and loads of little ones there. These are my original, that is the Hoya herbivata, and it was a variegated, I didn't want to get an all green one, but I never found one here in the UK. That's the original Hoya carii. And we have got the money plant, which why am I blocking on what it is called? And you can see at the very bottom there, it's, I think they're lithops, but I'm not entirely sure what those little succulents are called. They're the ones that look a bit, I always think, like beaks of a turtle, but very, very cool nonetheless. But yeah, this gets an awful lot of light. This is very, very heavy south-facing window, and you can see some of these leaves are bleached out, but there is a radiator directly beneath it. You can see there, it's doing fine. Moving into the bedroom, and here in the corner I've got a jasmine, and this was blooming all of the last year. I think it might have some blooms on the way in, I'm not entirely sure, possibly, but it seems to be doing all right. That is also in self-watering and pond. There is, I think that's a Hawarthia, I can't remember, that's the, the succulent that's got little windows essentially. It is the coolest, coolest little succulent because it is clear if I'm getting this to maybe focus let me get rid of that leaf there there you go very 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 cool these are the obeses and you can see that that's eventually what they turn into so they don't always stay like a, a perfectly round shape they kind of grow longer that was I'm so annoyed with this this was a Dioscorea and I can't remember which one it is and it was doing exceptionally well very very kind of rapid grower I think this is called air potatoes uh, because of that essentially and it started really deteriorating and was like oh but it's doing so well in the winter and I hadn't realized at some point when I went to water it it had one stem and I managed to snap it right at the bottom there and yeah I'm hoping this might come back I don't know I don't know an awful lot about Dios careers but I'm hoping that might come back this is the current size of the pregnant onion which is that one was the original one and these are all the babies it's coming into bloom, which is not too, too bad. Usually I remove them, but I've left it this year. And then I've got my Sansevieria Moonlight. And for those asking, that is a south-facing window. Again, the windows probably need a bit of a clean. 
Yes, the windows will be cleaned, but part of the thing that's going to change when the conservatory is changing is all of the windows in the house are going to get replaced and they will probably be taken care of a bit more at the moment. There's not an awful lot of love for these windows currently because, yeah, they're not particularly nice. Uh, but yeah, that is the moonlight and that's how much light the moonlight is getting and it is buckling out of its pot and there is a radiator directly beneath it. So, see what I mean? I wasn't lying. Mess and all, dirty windows and all, crispy leaves, propagation, things that have died off as well. This is the reality of a collection that kind of grows a bit more organically around the house. I will say, in the conservatory, because I spend a lot of time watering within here every day or longer on the weekends, Things, believe it or not, for however messy they might be, are more pristine than they ever would be in the house. All of my house plants are my feral plants, by the majority, essentially. So just like, survive or die. These are your two options. I will not mess around with you. If I'm going to be messing around with fussy plants, they will be in here, because I can control them a bit better. Anything out there, they need to do their own thing. But hopefully you've enjoyed. Let me know down below if some of the plants that I've got out in regular household, humidity and heat and all of these things have surprised you, even with some of the locations that I've got some of these plants. And yeah, let's have a discussion down below in the comments. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And hopefully this uh, kind of satisfies some of the curiosity that some of you might have had. But yeah, hopefully I shall see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.